I've headed today's page with this, today's whiteboard, because that way when you go to the textbook, you'll know what this is talking about, okay? Um, this, is, this is actually the heading of the exercise 3H, okay? But it's not that big a deal. Like all the stuff that you guys demonstrated over here will help you with this, okay? So here's a simple problem. I'm going to show you two ways to do this problem. And I'll let you decide which way you feel you're most comfortable with, okay? So long as you can do either of them, um, you, cho you choose the one you want and you can go. For it. So option one, option one is called common denominator. Do you remember? Do you remember when we looked at this question, number four, right? I suggested to you fractions are gross. Run and deal with the fraction. Let's just take the fraction out of things like completely and then march on with the question as necessary. Okay? So I've got two fractions here. I want to get rid of both of them. Okay? Now, being that fractions are about division, the way to get rid of fractions, which is division, is to what's the opposite of division? Multiply. multiply, right? So I want to choose a number that I can multiply both sides by that'll clear out all the fractions. Okay? Now that was really easy here, because there's only one fraction. So that's why we multiply by. Two. Make sense? But here, if I multiply by three or five, you'll only get rid of one of them, and I kind of want to get rid of everything. So in other words, what I want is the common denominator. What is the common denominator between three and five? It's 15, right? If I multiply both sides by 15, it'll clear off both fractions. So let's do that. Okay? I'm going to write out this step. So I get some water, you may. Don't you have your flask with you? No, I, Not it's, it's empty. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so what I've done is you write that on your timetable. Multiply both sides, simple thing. And because of us choosing the common denominator, this is going to come out in the wash. I can cancel in both cases, right? So for example, left hand side, what can I cancel for both sides? The three will go. That one will go. What do I get left with? Five. Yeah, this. It'll be fine. Good. And then over here, I can cancel the five. What do I get left with? Three. Three, good. So now I multiply through, and once I do that, because I chose my numbers well, I've got a five and an x, and then I've got a three and a two, which is six. Okay, so now we've taken this awkward thing with fractions everywhere, which we hated, and this is pretty simple, isn't it? What do I do to both sides? Divide by five. Okay. Done schemes, right? Now that is simple. I want you to notice though, um, this. Do you remember, we multiplied both sides by 15, and then we did some canceling, right? That's all my crossed out stuff, okay? Now I want you to pay really close attention to the numbers that appeared after we did all the canceling. Five and three. Five and three? Those numbers look really suspicious. They look like they kind of came from somewhere. Where were five and three in our original question? The other one. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were these denominators, right? Except you might see they've kind of, um, they've kind of swapped sides. Okay? And the reason they swapped sides is because we've multiplied across. Now, therefore, like instead of multiplying by 15, that's a big number, and it'll get bigger as we have a look at more difficult questions. I've got option two, which is to go straight to this five and this three with less steps, right? So this option two has a pretty funky name, and some of you have met this before, I hope, is called cross multiplying, okay? So here's the idea, and I'm gonna even draw it up on the uh, board so you can see. Here, right, I multiplied by 15 to get rid of both of them, okay? But in fact, what I can do is, if I multiply both sides by five, this five is going to, and this is the language we were using before, right? This five is going to come up the top here. Do you see that? Multiply both by five, and it ends up on this numerator. Right? Disappears from here, and he appears up here. Okay. And then at the same time, if I multiply by this three now, he just migrates over there. Can you see why it's called cross multiplication? Okay? Not very imaginative, right? So once I've done that, I literally say, well, that's going to be five times x. I just go straight to that line, right? That denominator comes up here, migrates up to the numerator. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Multiply that 2 by 3, that gives me 6. And you can see, I got to where I was going to get before, except I just didn't have to write as much. It was substantially faster. Okay? So I still end up with the same answer. Okay. Okay. So you've got these two techniques up your sleeve. Uh, Cross-multiplying and common denominator, they're kind of two ways to do the same thing. 
But because this is faster, a lot more is happening in your brain, that might be a bit much for you. If you do this method and you're like, I'm just running into mistakes, that's okay. Just come back to this and then migrate over when you feel confident. Okay? But this is, um, this is quicker and I encourage you to do it if you're like, yeah, I get it. Um, how do you write it if you were writing with, like, on that one you go times five? Like, how would you write it? Yeah, you know what? You know what? I literally. I I, if you really want to indicate what you're doing, you can put these like the actual arrows in. That's the cross multiplication action. But honestly, there is not, and this is the great thing about it, there's no intervening line. You can go straight to that. That is the cross multiplication. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could say it's 5 times x and 2 times 3 so that the multiplication is really obvious. But I think we can do all of that in our head, and generally um, you can. Sometimes, I don't know why I do it, but I go like... I do x times 5, wait, no, yeah, x times 5, 3 times 5, and then 2 times 3, 2 times 3, and then I do the whole long thing. So you've done it the long way around. Yeah, you? really yeah. long. So I think the key is, and you can see that when I draw the arrows, right? Like, we don't have to double up the work. Multiply by 15 and then canceling on both sides is, is doing work and then undoing it. Yeah. Whereas here, it's like it just goes straight there and straight there. Yeah. So the arrows is what helps me, gives me that cue.